Hello, Bishop Walsh here. I am at the beautiful Cathedral of St. Mary of Mount Carmel here in Gaylord, and I'm gonna be doing a seven part series on uh, reflections from the Liturgy of the Hours uh, during this Easter season, similar to what I did uh, during the Lenten season where there were um, you know, reflections from the saints regarding Lent and our journey through the desert. Now, I'm going to be spending these next seven weeks, and I think they'll be posted on Fridays, reflecting from saints talking about Easter, and then as we get closer to Ascension and Pentecost as well, having um, the insights that come from the ancient tradition. A lot of these saints are somewhat lost to antiquity, unless you, you um, are reading them from this book or other sources, but uh, it just, to me, it goes to show how rich the tradition is. It's so many people have made contributions to what we've come to know and to learn about our faith and the way we could take these to heart, uh, it just reinforces to me all the more, you know, just how from the very beginning, there were those whose hearts were so stirred and moved by the message of faith that Jesus proclaimed and then witnessing all the things that he went through uh, and then celebrating them and wanting to pass them down and to share that with others, even at the cost of their own lives. We know the lives of the martyrs have always been the seeds for uh, the growth in the church. So it's amazing the witnesses uh, through both word and in witness to, of their lives, the way they lived, uh, go hand in hand. So that's what we always hope to do as well as disciples of the Lord, just take the message of faith and live it according to the gifts and talents perhaps that God has given us in our particular vocations, wherever we're at, no matter what we do. The call to holiness is a universal call and we learn to um, abide by it and celebrate as best we can. So I'm doing this series basically because I remember one of the lines I used in one of the homilies during Easter was that we have to be as Christians, as good at feasting as we are at fasting. Uh, so I thought if I did a series on the penitential nature of Lent and fasting, that we should also do a series uh, to help celebrate and to feast during the Easter season. So there'll be seven of these videos, again, 10 minutes in length or so, and it's just gonna be somewhat of a devotional to read from the saints, do a little prayer, and just have uh, a reflection based on uh, some of the content that is, is in, are in these remarks. So this first one is the Easter homily. It's actually in the Liturgy of the Hours on the Monday after Easter, so it's a prominent place for uh, a reflection, and it's from Melito of Sardis, who was a bishop. He said, We should understand, beloved, that the Paschal mystery is at once old and new, transitory and eternal, corruptible and incorruptible, mortal and immortal, in terms of the law, it is old. In terms of the word, it is new. In its figure, it is passing. In its grace, it is eternal. It is corruptible in the sacrifice of the Lamb, incorruptible in the eternal life of the Lord. It is mortal in his burial in the earth, immortal in his resurrection from the dead. The law indeed is old, but the word is new. The type is transitory, but grace is eternal. The lamb was corruptible, but the Lord is incorruptible. He was slain as a lamb. He rose again as God. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, yet he was not a sheep. He was silent as a lamb, yet he was not a lamb. The type has passed away. The reality has come. The lamb gives place to God, the sheep gives place to a man, and the man is Christ, who fills the whole of creation. The sacrifice of the lamb, the celebration of the Passover, and the prescriptions of the law have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Under the old law and still more under the new dispensation, everything pointed toward him. Both the law and the word came forth from Zion and Jerusalem. But now the law has given place to the word, the old and the new. The commandment has become grace, a type of reality. The lamb has become a son, the sheep a man, and man, God. 
The Lord, though he was God, became man. He suffered for the sake of those who suffer. He was bound for those in bonds, condemned for the guilty, buried for those who lie in the grave. But he rose from the dead and cried aloud, Who will content with me? Let him confront me. I have freed the condemned, brought the dead back to life, raised men from their graves. Who has anything to say against me? I, he said, am the Christ. I have destroyed death, triumphed over the enemy, trampled hell underfoot, bound the strong one, and taken men up to the heights of heaven. I am the Christ. Come then, all you nations of men, Receive forgiveness for the sins that defile you. I am your forgiveness. I am the Passover that brings salvation. I am the lamb who was immolated for you. I am your ransom, your life, your resurrection, your light. I am your salvation and your king. I will bring you to the heights of heaven. With my own right hand, I will raise you up, and I will show you the Eternal Father. So, great way to kick off this series, reflecting on those powerful words, and to be reminded of the true nature of our Lord's resurrection is about salvation. And we can't talk about salvation unless there was a need for being saved. Saved from what? Saved from our sins. And so the law and the prophets were precursors. They helped. God, they were God's revelation, but they were all pointing to this definitive revelation of the Word made flesh. Greater than the law, greater than the prophets. The only name by which we can be saved. The power through which God comes into the world to forgive sins. And to overcome the devil and to again put hell underfoot as was described here so we have to allow that power to be unleashed experience that power uh, in our lives through our baptism it's something we are connected to it's something that we have to receive with docility but an act with a great connectivity uh, so we pray that we have that grace as part of the Easter blessing for all of us in the church so we'll offer prayer. The Father glorified Jesus and appointed him heir to all nations. And so we praise him. Lord Christ, by your victory, you broke the power of evil and destroyed sin and death. Make us victorious over sin today. You laid death low and brought us new life. Grant that we may walk today in this new life. You gave life to the dead and led mankind from death to life. Give eternal life to all those we shall meet today. You brought confusion on the guards at your tomb, but joy to your disciples. Grant the fullness of joy to all who serve you. Father, you give your church constant growth by adding new members to your family. Help us put into action in our lives the baptism we have received with faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.